Welcome back. In this video, we're going to finish our discussion about limits and continuity by talking about uh, continuous complex valued functions. All right, so the definition of continuity is fairly simple. We will say that a function f is continuous at a point z0 if the limit as z approaches z0 of f of z is equal to the function value at z0. Okay, now this definition of continuous should be very familiar from first semester calculus. Basically, we're just saying that as your function approaches a certain input value, do the output values equal what they actually are when uh, you plug z0 into the function itself? Now, here's a picture from a, a real semester, uh, a real calculus uh, class, a first semester calculus class. You'll see that this function is not continuous for multiple reasons. First of all, the limit from the left and from the right of the function do not exist as x approaches x uh, x naught, so the function is not continuous. Furthermore, f of x naught is not equal to either of these uh, one-sided limits, and so the uh, the function limit does not exist, and certainly the limit does not equal the function value at the point. It's it's not continuous. Now, the same definition will will involve the same ideas um, in complex analysis, but uh, as we saw in the previous video, um, the idea of a limit gives you a little bit more to look at because uh, we're looking not just at what happens as z approaches z0 from the left and from the right, we also have to take a look at what happens as z approaches z0 from any direction in any manner. Okay. Now to take a look at the definition one more time, we're saying that f is continuous at a point z0 if um, the limit is equal to this, this statement. Now this is actually saying uh, three different things that are worth checking. We're saying, first of all, that the left-hand side exists. In other words, the limit exists as z approaches z0. We're saying that the right-hand side exists. So in other words, f is defined at z0. z0 is in the domain. You can plug it in and get something out. And then the third statement is, uh, is what it looks like we're saying here. We're saying that the two values you existed before, uh, you know existed, are actually equal to each other. All right. Now, to uh, to demonstrate some of the weird things that can happen, you see what the, can happen when you're dealing with the function of uh, one real variable. Let's go back to the the two functions we had before. Now, I'm going to take a look at uh, what happens as I move a point along a path in the complex plane. Now, um, instead of thinking of the red, blue and red point and the blue point as two separate points, what I'm going to do is think of them as one single point and they'll, uh, they'll be responsible for different legs of the journey. Now when you're dealing with a, uh, a real function, the idea is that as x moves along the x-axis smoothly, your y-coordinates should also change smoothly, connectedly. Um, you shouldn't have any jumps like we have here. Now, in complex functions, what does a jump look like? Well, here's an example. So let's suppose that our point is moving uh, along, and you can see in the W plane on the right that it's approaching the origin from the right along the axis. Then uh, starting the second leg of our journey, the, the blue point's going to be moving um, along the, uh, the imaginary axis. So it's kind of like the... Uh, Oh, sorry, the blue point will take over the journey. So it's kind of like our function uh, took a, a left turn. Now you can see the image that the uh, the uh, the point continues smoothly. So the the red point started over here, and then uh, continued over here. And so our function took a path that was a connected path in the z plane, and transformed it to a connected path in the w plane. That's what happens with a continuous function. If we were to take a look at a non-continuous function though, and again let's take a look at uh, red and blue as representing the two different legs of, the, of a single point along a path. The red point will move along the, uh, the real axis and you can see the image there is moving steadily along the line at 2i until suddenly the red point disappears for the second um, half of our journey 
the blue point is going to pick up and uh, take a left turn along the imaginary axis and then suddenly you'll notice that the image jumped okay so remember the red point was moving along the left until it got to a position here at 2i and then disappeared and then suddenly as our blue point picked up the path um, our path suddenly jumped from 2i back to negative 1 and then proceeded and so even though we had a connected path here that took a, a turn at the origin the uh, the path of the images was not connected it suddenly jumped from one point to another okay so this is what looks like when you take a look at uh, the behavior of a of a function where the limit does not exist, of a, of a non-continuous function. Okay. Now, just like we saw with limits, in deciding whether a function is continuous, it helps to take a look at the real and imaginary parts of that function. If we can break our function f into a real part u and an imaginary part v, and if we want to take a look at the uh, at whether the function is continuous at the point z0, and z0 has real part x0 and y part why not as its uh, imaginary part, then to decide whether it's continuous, all we need to do is check whether the functions u and v are continuous at the point x0, y0. So in other words, we're taking a question from uh, complex analysis, is the function f continuous at z0, and changing it into a function from multivariable calculus. Are these functions u and v continuous at the point x0, y0? Okay. Now just as we saw with limits, um, there are some familiar properties of continuous functions that um, are also true for complex functions. If f and g are both continuous at the point z0, then you can uh, multiply the continuous function f by any constant and uh, get another continuous function out. The sum of continuous functions is continuous, and the difference of continuous functions is continuous. The product of continuous functions is also continuous, as is the quotient provided that the, uh, the value of the function in the denominator is not equal to zero at the point z0. Now, from these, uh, we can deduce a couple more consequences. Um, complex polynomials, polynomials that are integer powers of z, positive and non-negative integer powers of z, together with uh, constant coefficients, they can be made up from these first two operations. And uh, actually the first three operations. Because of that, they are continuous over the entire complex plane. Rational functions, which are just uh, fractions with polynomials in the numerator and denominator, they will also be continuous provided that the bottom is defined. So in other words, uh, they will be continuous on their domains, whatever their domains happen to be. Now one other useful property which we'll store for future reference. If a complex function is continuous, at every point in a closed bounded region, then the function is guaranteed to be bounded on this region. So if the region is bounded to begin with and it's closed, then the images will be bounded. All right? All right, well that's our discussion about continuous functions. You'll notice that the text here introduces in this section branches of uh, functions. We will introduce these idea of branches and branch cuts, branch points, uh, a little bit later on in the course when we start talking about logarithmic functions. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you in class.